RDLs and core, and I'll probably do some single leg stuff as well. Uh, I want to get a good stretch. I'm not too worried about how much weight. I just want to get a good stretch, and then yeah, and even adding plates raises the bar. So it's it's good to have it as low as possible for what I'm focusing on today. Nice little crack in there. That's why we're doing this with no weight on. Let's go for five more. So definitely feeling it in the feet there. Really good foot exercise. Woo! Okay. Well, that looks about right. I don't do these often. I should do that way more. Cool. Holy cow. Okay. Nice. Let's do some core exercises and we'll do our second set. Okay. We're doing the overhead ball throws. And I saw in the footage of last time I did this exercise, my elbows were quite bent. So we're gonna try to really, really keep the arms straight. I don't know if it'll work in practice. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but at least if my focus is going there, 
Yeah, something might happen. I'm actually gonna stay back here. Oh, heard a bunch of cracking in my sternum there. That was pretty good. And this is a heavier, 15 pounds. Yeah, so it's not going as far without the elbows, but that might just mean that I can get more reps in with less walking. Okay, two more. I'm really digging deep for these. That feels good. That never fails to be really difficult. And back inside for deficit. 10 pounds on each side. And we'll try to go for eight or 10. Uh, not too concerned about exactly how many reps we're doing. More concerned about getting a good stretch. This might be a bad idea. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go for six. You can tell right away. One. Good stretch at the knee. Up controlled. <laughs> Three. Five, one more. I'm gonna pass out. Six. Oh. Ah, there we go. And we followed up. No time to lose. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Fast, 
but I don't know. I'm, I do it. I, ex I feel like I exercise frequently enough that as long as I'm getting the volume in, it's okay. And right to the uh, ball throws. Right away. Not waiting or anything. Just a few deep breaths. Actually, I completely forgot to warm up my abductors, so here we are again. Uh, this is like a glute, glute warm up. I'm gonna do this for about a minute and 30 seconds, trying to push my knees out. And this is a 10 pound weight. I, I could do without, but if I'm leaning forward more, I feel like I can, or I mean, if I'm leaning backwards, I feel like I can sit back and still have pressure along the whole foot. So that turns it into more of a warm up and less of an exercise. And that's what we want right now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Man, we'll try to go for six. If we have to take the weights off, that's okay. Not too concerned about it. I'm just doing this for the stretch. So, if I'm feeling a stretch, no matter what weight we're using, we know there's some stimulation going on. And I'm not concerned about what's optimal or most efficient. I'm just concerned about a stretch right above the knee. Kind of maybe a little unorthodox. Uh, but that's, that's, I really don't, I could not care less. We are doing our own thing. My calves are giving in. Oh, four. Oh, fucking Christ. Five. Six. giving me the what the hell are you doing to me signals I'm getting all the signals in my body that I should not do that X minus the pain minus the one last thing that the body will tell me when it's really time to stop it's probably a good sign that I'm doing exactly what I need for myself right now.
11, 12. This needs to go back. That. Oh, there's so much cracking happening in my sternum, it's honestly kind of scary. <laughs> it's such a full body compound movement that I don't even feel any strain anywhere. It's just like, I, it just makes me feel weak. When I do this, I feel like I've been working for nothing my whole life. Ah, I just, <laughs> that's good, that's a good sign. I made the executive decision to switch to some deadlifts and we probably won't go over 255 might not even get even close but that's a but that's like my hard limit e even if it feels the best I've ever felt it I am deciding based on how I felt the beef in the previous sets nothing over 255 right now and I'm not gonna feel that good so we'll probably go up to the 205, 215 range and just chill around there. And these, this bar is pretty tall. I mean, I love deficit. So now, now that it's on like off the ground, it feels like it's super tall, which is kind of fun. It's flying. It's flying. So here's 205. And we're going to take it nice and easy. Uh, we're not going to do <laughs> explosive reps like we just did. And actually, I just turned the camera on. But I need to wait a couple minutes, so we're going to go throw the ball around. I kind of did what I wanted to do with the balls. I don't want to put too much stress on my lower back right before a bunch of heavy deadlifts, or at least heavy for me. So, let's have some fun with it and just see how far we can throw this thing. Okay. <laughs> at this point, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I couldn't describe to you the benefits of this. It's just, it's fun thing to do. Fun thing to do when I while I wait between sets. That's all we're doing. Ah. Okay, so it's been about two minutes. Let's go back in. Okay, so, so first six, nice and easy, not injuring myself, and then the two to four next ones, uh, we'll try to spice things up. If if there's anything we feel, uh, we can we can have fun with. A little bit narrower stance. Uh, let's let's do what I ski with. 
That's just slightly wider than shoulder width. So I'm just throwing weight around. Let's do two more nice ones. Let's, let's not kid ourselves here. That was, that was kind of sloppy, honestly. Oh well. Sloppy happens. Just gotta deal with it sometimes. There we go. So that's pretty good. So we're now on our second set of deadlifts, but if you remember the deficit, I think we did three sets of deficit deadlifts at uh, six to eight reps. So as far as hamstring sets, this would be set uh, so, and, and all either a really good stretch or kind of heavy, so, you know, we, we probably won't do more than eight sets, and eight sets is already pushing it, especially since I haven't done deadlifts in a while, and I don't want to, well, actually, I really don't mind being sore for, uh, yeah, no, I don't mind being sore, uh, not tomorrow at least. So uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do anti sumo, then conventional, and like half sumo, and sumo. So kind of just every rep we do right now, it's gonna get a little bit wider until my feet are next to the barbell. Uh, that's so yeah. So here we go. That's the hardest one right there. And now my feet are below these marks roughly. So this is basically, it's basically like a narrow sumo. And sumo is my weakest, honestly. I just never, I never do it. You don't need to do it for skiing really. And then feet next to the barbell. Ah. <sighs> And this one should fly. It's my weakest, but also sumo's cheating. Yeah, so. Try not to crush my toes. That was epic. That was really. Okay. Uh, that's all I'm doing for deadlifts. That felt great. I can't complain. Uh, the plan has always been no plan, play by feel, so uh, this has been a success. We're still not done with the core though. Still not done with the core. <sighs> Give me that. And... One. Twelve. All right. I've decided I'm gonna go for fourteen reps on each side, uh, just so I'm not leaving anything on the table. Ooh. 
Nice. Now this side. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen. One more. That concludes the resistance training for the day. And I'm gonna stretch. I'm not gonna show you my stretching. Basically, it's just an hour and a half of me watching ski edits and listening to music and stretching. So just watching ski edits, stretching, music. Uh, that's pretty much it. For the videos, while I'm stretching, I'm gonna watch a lot more. I'm gonna to try to look for the dub 10 videos because I've been teaching myself dub 10s. I've been teaching it wrong the whole time. I've been just every, it's just not good. Uh, my understanding of axis uh, is not, uh, was not up to point. Uh, yesterday when I went to the trampoline to try my first dub tense, there's. I'm figuring it out. I mean, I so in the in the next week or so, I'm gonna upload a video, and it's gonna show uh, what I thought I understood previously, and what actually needs to happen. And, and also, I'm gonna be defining what a cork actually is, because there's not all corks are created equal, right? There's. Uh, different axes and actually I'm, I'm by the time I get to making that video I will have dropped any attempt to name axes so I won't be saying misty cork rodeo flat or straight or anything like that I'll just say axis I'll say this particular axis words like that uh, so that should be interesting and and not not all corks are created equal. So like under a, any specific axis, there's going to be uh, some ways to do that are way more efficient than others. Uh, uh, usually in, indicators. So we're, we're going to be looking as, as how the head kind of goes around the hips and uh, that, that should get us started. Uh, there's yeah so because people with uh, uh, anyone with a formal freestyle slope style education uh, the way they flip it is uh, very efficient like we'll we'll just have to watch some videos and and figure it out because if you go back to my Friday video on the trampoline you can see there is so much energy being put into the dub 10 attempts 
and it just was misdirected. It, it's, it's really interesting because uh, I, I had always been convinced that it would be easier than it than it ended up being, and it turns out it is not supposed to be super hard if you if you do the steps correctly. So so we're gonna next video do the steps correctly, uh, see where we went wrong, and uh, that should be really interesting because I think I'll, I don't think I'm the only one. I do not think I'm the only one. So uh, hopefully this helps someone.